Now let's get the inside track on how one charity is empowering rural Indians to take up sport and to compete as athletes. India's got a population of 1.2 billion, but in 2016's Rio Olympics, the world's largest democracy won just two medals. Mandeshi champions are hoping to change that. Their sports programme has now trained 4,000 athletes, out of which more than 150 are playing on international and national level. This year, they've also launched a new initiative to help uh, offer training and employment in the sports industry to young rural girls with a focus on law enforcement, nutrition and coaching. So let's welcome to, the, to, to you all and to the studio our guest, who is Prabhat here. Sina. Yes, from Mandeshi. And uh, Prabhat, I met on a train in Davos. Absolutely, <laughs> Which is yeah. why it's a good story how you two met, actually. One of the reasons why we met. Yes, um, Prabhat and I were both struggling with our bags mm -hmm. on very snowy, icy platforms in Davos, yeah. weren't we? And we talked all the way from Davos to Zurich, and you told me your story. So do tell us more about how you started this venture. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I grew up in the same village where the Mandeshi Champions program is. And when I was growing up, this is I'm talking about in 1990s and 95. We didn't have a proper electricity. There will be 18 hours of electricity cut. They won't, we won't, the, the kids and the families won't even have the opportunity to watch a TV. So what we did was we were playing sports, but a different kind of sports. You would go, uh, we had a century, and century they had a hyena, so you will go watch the hyenas. And then you will go climb the trees, you will go swim in the lakes. We never knew that these actually, or jump from even water wells, this is like a kind of a cliff diving sport. We never knew that this sport exists. There was no organized sports. Even in India, cricket is huge. But in the schools, still there are no organized sports. So I had enough. This is in the rural areas of India. The rural areas of the India. The very poor areas e of exactly. India. Exactly. Very poor rural areas of India, underprivileged communities. Most of the people who come to my academy are coming from shepherd communities, sugarcane cutters. Some of the girls don't even go to school. They do labor work. So they would do eight hours of labor, labor work. And in the morning, we will have two hours of academy. And then in, that, in the training, we'll give nutrition. But how did you get from, from growing up in that setting to, to where we, you are now, where you're managing to catapult these young girls, who, as you say, are, are, are shepherds. Many of them haven't been to school, mm -hmm. uh, to becoming you know, athletes on an international level. I had I had opportunity to go to the U.S. and there I played for basketball for middle school and high school. That's where it kind of gave me an opportunity to know about how the sports and how sports have changed my life. I was the boy running around the uh, villages in India with no shoes. When I came come back to India after seven to eight years, I worked in a sports industry in the U.S. When I come back, I see the same thing. I see the different. Only one difference is now kids and families have mobile phones, but still they don't have shoes to wear. So that kind of put me like, you know, how can these kids have a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential. My, some of my athletes have excelled on the national level, on the international level. These kids who, cutting the sugar can, one of the athletes is Sarita Bise. She is now the national hockey captain of the Maharashtra hockey team. You know, by cutting the sugar can, being a shepherd, like in a year she would travel 300 miles with her sheep to find water. And then she would come back. She never went to school in her life, but today she represents, she's the captain of the team. Prabhat, let's talk about money, because obviously this costs money, doesn't it, to run a place like this. Um, where do you get your funding from and how does it work as a business? I know it is a charity as well. Yeah, definitely. So the funding is mainly, I, because I, have, I had my contacts in the US, so there are a lot of individual donors, there are a lot of athletes who are supporting this program. On the same time, we do a lot of crowdfunding. And then on the local level, we have some corporate companies and uh, there's another individual donor who's, who's supporting us to build facilities. Who we have right now, we started with their 400 meter running track. Today we have a gym, 13,000 square foot gym. We have a swimming pool. So all this is done in the last four to five years. Also on the same time, as we were talking about, um, that we have the employment opportunities. Now this is the first time these kids are this applying for sports jobs. I wanted to create sports jobs in India. You know, it's 1.2 billion population. A lot of viewership, but they're not money sports jobs how they are in the U.S. So I thought about how do I create the sports job by giving them, giving them training in nutrition, becoming nutritionists, law enforcement officers, gym trainers. So it's just so much to discuss. Well. Yes, it is. Uh, Prabhat, thanks for coming in. It's really lovely to meet you again Thank you and so have much. you in Thank our you so studio. Much Best so of luck. Thank you so much. Prabhat Sinha, so it's Man Deshi. Do take a look uh, at what they're up to and some of the inspiring stories they've got to tell. It's very inspiring. Now, let's uh, take you through how you can get in touch with